bumps and tubing and the location of the failure, the cause of the failure and getting to that root cause is important and any kind of changes in operation that we have like strokes per minute or, or stroke length, <clears throat> et cetera, within our system. Now, uh, hope you can see this okay. Yeah, it looks pretty good on the screen. Um, <clears throat> I want to kind of walk through this Wellview Equipment Problems page with you. And I will mention that like these, most of these screenshots are off of Wellview 7.2, and we currently just went to 8.1. So where there's a few changes, I'll try to point those out to you. But um, uh, it, Peloton, which is the owner of Wellview, has, has adopted a lot of uh, the criteria that we use, and, and um, we've let them use our libraries and distribute those. And, and we're happy to share, we have shared with our libraries that we use with other people. In fact, um, I might just throw that out as a little promotional thing. You know, if, uh, we're always comparing our benchmarking our failure rates, but really for that to be a good comparison, if we use the same kind of libraries uh, to measure those failures, we can get a lot better benchmark. So if we as an industry, you know, one of the things that's happening is um, there is an industry consortium called RIFS, which is doing this for ESPs, and they've come up with kind of a standard set of things that they want to track. So if, if people are interested in getting together to um, come up with, you know, kind of look at these libraries and, and modify them, uh, we'd be interested in working with them on that. So, uh, okay, so let's look at some of the things we track in here, some of the uh, data. The knowing your failure date is an important, uh, just get rid of that, uh, part of uh, this. This failure date in conjunction with your job start date and job end date, which I'm going to show you in another uh, Wellview folder, can be used to figure out things like uh, your mean time between failure, how long it took you from the time the well failed to get on the well, how long it took you to repair the well once you were on it. So that helps you with your downtime or your loss volume reporting. Uh, we also look at the failure description and the area failed. Now the failure description would be that piece of equipment that failed, like a rod pump, and the area, like in this case, uh, the barrel of the rod pump failed. Um, all of these choices that we have, any place where there's um, three dots here, See how there's three dots here on the picture? Any place there's three dots in a little box, that means there's a library there. And when we have a library, most of our libraries around equipment failures are locked down because we don't want things like uh, we have a rod pump or a pump comma rod failure. So everything's locked down so when you do these database queries, you, your data comes out the same way. So here's an example like of the description library. Uh, which the failure description, so this is, these are all the different parts, rods, rod failure, which caused pump damage, rod insert pump, safety valves, that kind of thing. And then the area, like in this case, it was a tubing failure and it was a tubing body that failed. So that allows you a little bit of mix and match because, you know, you could also have a rod body failure, right, without having to have so, so many pieces in one part of the library. Okay, and then we also want to get the type of failure, the things that we kind of things we put